Hey, I'm Leah. And I'm Ben. And this is Alaska. Good timing, Alaska. <laughs> she, she, she's a pro. a pro. It has been a long time getting here to Alaska. You wouldn't think it would take like four and a half years to get to Alaska, but we started out in Chile, and I guess that's not really a good enough excuse, but we have had a lot of problems on the way. Uh, we've taken the engine out, I think, 11 or 12 times, 10, mm, 11, 12. Visa issues. Yeah, six months visa delay. Mm. The bus caught on fire. Mm. But eventually <laughs> we made it to Alaska. We are here. Life up here is different. The people up here are different. The landscape is different. Like everything's different, particularly on the North Slope. Like we drove up to the top to, to Dead Horse and then went to the Arctic Ocean in Kaktovik and like the trees stop. You're driving up the highway and the trees just stop. You know, you go over the last mountain range on the entire continent and then you've just got tundra all the way to the ocean. Like you don't get that down in Canada, you don't get that down in the lower 48 or in Mexico or anything like that. Like, yeah, it's been completely worth coming to Alaska. Something that I noticed that you do differently than most people is you pick up hitchhikers. So it just seems as though, and just talking to you, it seems like you're view of, of travelers and interacting with other people, you're very open. How has that shaped your travels and how you you travel? Like, Because when you travel, you have to trust in a lot of people. You know, you really put your trust in a lot of people. Is that, has this trip affected you? Is this, or is that the way you've always viewed traveling? I think um, you have to be open. I think um, what you put out is what you get back. And I've tried to put out good karma by picking up people. Um, I haven't had one problem in over a hundred people that I've shared this bed with. There's been random people, like a, a Venezuelan guy flagged me down on a road in Colombia um, on his motorbike, just flagged me down. I stopped and he said, oh, I'm going couch surfing in Cali. Do you want to come? I said, well, I do couch surfing in here. You can sleep in here if you want. So that night after meeting him that evening, he was sleeping in the bed next to me. And I, you know, a hundred stories like that and no problem at all. It's been a learning and discovery process for me too. I think. Um, unfortunately we're brought up to to kind of see you like problems with other people and fear in to fear things yeah. In people, yeah like you watch the news and you, you fear other places that you haven't been to because mm. that's what you're presented it's dangerous over there this will happen to you if you go there but my experience of over eight years of traveling the world has been completely the opposite essentially I discovered that people are all the same you know, we have the same interests. Well, not necessarily the same interests, but the, the same priorities. The same things are important to us. Like, love is the same, you know? Like, I think we should concentrate more on the things that we have in common than the things we have in different, mm. the differences we have. And everyone you meet along the way, you always learn something different from somebody. There's always someone that you can, like, even meeting them for a split second, you can, you just, learn so much don't you i learned that from you and did i teach you that leah taught me that she's I like taught you to be open and just take in what what people are teaching you because there's always a teacher in somebody it's mm. good advice so i'm sure you two have learned a lot from each other being in this small space as a couple so is there any insights or anything because people ask you questions all the time i'm sure is there anything that, that you've learned or you discuss about being in a relationship in this small space that people don't ask you that you think is important? People don't usually ask us about the relationship, um, no, really. how we get on. People ask if we're in a relationship. Mm. You know, Especially at the start, because yeah. I was traveling with him just as a, a traveler for a while. Yeah, the first two times Leah was in the combi, she was a friend. Mm. And it's only now that she's been a, a, a cuddle companion. <laughs> <laughs> but it is hard to like, like with anything, with any relationship, you're, you know, slowly learning about the person and what well, to do, what not to do, what they, you know. Well, and being in a tight space like this, it's even harder. I think it's amplified more. Like you're just gonna, you need to learn very quickly. Yes. Or it's just not gonna work. Yeah. Just uh, a lot of patience, good communication, and try to. You know, everybody thinks about changing the world, but nobody thinks about changing themselves, like that kind of thing. Like, you think like, what can you do to fix somebody else? But really, like, how can you accept their apparent flaws or, you know, mm -hmm. change your own ways to adapt to them? I think that's a much more productive. Mm -hmm. Can you remind me of that later? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to, uh, to pick a mode of transportation, if you could do anything you wanted to do, would it be bus life? Would it be boat life? Would it be RV life? 
or is right now you're just going with the flow and whatever comes your way you're going to be doing. Do you know what, after being in your RV, <laughs> all the space and the... Oh, but I wouldn't be able to bring my RV down here. I wouldn't be able to no. get this spot. You know, so that you're, I mean it's give and take with everything, but you, you think you would pick RV? Now, I, I do like being in, 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 a, in a smaller van, definitely. You can get to places like these, you can go, you know, find that little nice quiet spot next to the river in an RV, I guess that you couldn't do that. I think both of us are all about exploring and adventure and um, different adventures dictate different vehicles, you know. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see living myself living in a larger vehicle if I had, you know, kids running around. Um, I could, I definitely want to do a motorbike trip in the future. Um, at some point, I would like to explore the oceans, and so I would love to be able to be in a, a sailboat. And that is like a kind of retirement plan for us, mm. like retiring at about forty. You know, I think whatever vehicle we choose or mode of transport, we're going to adapt to it quite easily and just make it work. So. They might be tuk tuks in India. We yes. were thinking about that at one, at one that's stage. A, that's a definite I think it'd be a great way to, to see India and tuk tuks and you know, leaving that. Yeah. I'm, I'm always thinking about this. If uh, this, this tiny home movement, this van life, you know, hashtag van life that's so popular now, do you think technology is allowing this to happen and people have always had this desire to travel? Or do you feel as though this has always been a subculture? It just, we weren't able to sit here with four cameras and discuss this and broadcast it to thousands of people. Do you think it's it's one or the other, or do you think it's kind of in between? I think the subculture has expanded since being able to see all the, you know, the beautiful Instagram pictures and people want to aspire to have that life. Yeah. Um, it's definitely always been there, but it's definitely grown. I think a lot of people go, I can do that, and I want to do that. Yeah, people have definitely been inspired by the... Uh the Instagram movement and the hashtag van life but um, I think because technology has evolved so much in the last few years people are now able to take their work and their lifestyles you know on the road they can they, you can now be a digital nomad and go almost anywhere so that's really growing and it will continue to grow I think coming up from South America I didn't see a lot of people doing um, the digital nomad lifestyle because it's kind of hard, you need a consistent internet connection. Up here in North America it's much more prevalent and it's much more accessible because mm -hmm. you can get like cellular signal in lots of places mm -hmm. and you can truly live a productive lifestyle out of a vehicle up here. How's it been living with a little dog in, in such a small space being that we have a dog now and it completely 110% changed our dynamic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did it change a lot for you or has it been have you been in any situations where the pub's been a problem you're going through borders i can only imagine some of the some of the dealings you had to go through we have that. a bit of a process you might not be able to do this when you cross borders but we tend to hide her in the back in the bed <laughs> and she's pretty good she just lies down and stays quiet um it did change a few things having little alaska here who was named after our destination um mostly it brought a lot more love and joy into my life um there were a few problems like when you go to national parks you can't take her in all of the restaurants south of the US are dog friendly a lot of them in the US are also dog friendly um, so it hasn't been a major problem one of the things that you need to consider is like if you do need to go in somewhere where a dog can't come in then you have to leave the dog at home and if your home is a vehicle that's not always practical so there has been on occasion situations where one of us has to stay or we're just not able to go to certain places so there are sacrifices but really like any sacrifice you make pales in comparison to like the companionship that a dog will bring and she's a great little duck guard dog too so you're, you're definitely living the minimalist lifestyle in in this bus but it seems as though that, that you're doing incredibly well with it. Do you feel as though it's a, uh, it's a lifestyle that most people could do? Or do you think most people aren't able to do it? Or if they were put in a situation, they'd totally be fine doing it? I think it depends on the person. Like it's people that are very adaptable can easily adapt to this lifestyle. Like it's, you don't really miss anything. Like we don't have a shower or toilet or anything but we still survive and it's a great life lifestyle so I think many people I think once you try you fall in love with it 
Yeah, there's a lot of people that would hate it. This would be somebody's nightmare, for sure. I've got friends that are like, I don't know, I'm not even coming to visit you for a weekend. <laughs> but, you know, there's many people that would surprise themselves. Everybody's adaptable. You could put anyone into a, this situation and they would eventually, you know, not miss having the, the bathrooms and the showers. And, you know, they would just start to appreciate being outside and being with nature all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think anybody that even is tempted to live a nomadic lifestyle and or van life or live in an RV on the road, like the, you owe it to yourself to try because if you don't try, you might regret that for the rest of your life.